obviously, uh, I'm very grateful to the court for its patience and listening um, to all of these victims here today. It was very, very important that you hear from them directly and uh, the stories that they shared with you, um, really very personal and very compelling as to the impact that this crime had on so many people on so many levels. The, the focus of my comments, Your Honor, will briefly uh, speak as to Daryl Brooks and his prior history because I think it's important there's a record of that. Um, but I don't intend to spend a lot of time on Daryl Brooks because I think what's already been said is the most important message that I'd like this court uh, to think about overnight as you consider your options here. I will tell the court as to Mr. Brooks' uh, prior record, the court is aware from the bail jumping charges he's pending on several felony counts in Milwaukee County, uh, 21 CF 5020. He's charged with intimidation of a victim, that being Erica Patterson, and felony bail jumping with an offense date of November 8, 2021. He's pending on case number 21, CF 4596, with an offense date of November 2 of 2021. Charged there with resisting, obstructing, felony bail jumping, second degree recklessly endangering safety, domestic battery, and domestic DC. That is the case where he is alleged to have struck Erica Patterson in the face with a closed fist after an argument. And then as she was walking away, intentionally ran her over with the same 2010 Ford Escape that he used in this attack. When the police went to his mother's home and found him there, he uh, was in the Ford as they approached. He got out and tried to run into the house. He ignored their commands to stop. He tried to flee and uh, eventually was apprehended. He lied to them and said he was not driving the Ford SUV that day, even though there was evidence to the contrary. That case is pending in Milwaukee County. He was released on $1,000 cash bail in that case on November 19th of 2021. There's a third file pending, 20 CF 2550, the charges are two counts of second degree recklessly, I'm sorry, reckless use of a weapon, felon in possession of a firearm. The date of violation is July 24, 2020. He was released on cash bail in that case in March of 21. In that case, the allegation is that he got into a fight with his nephew and as his nephew was leaving the area, the defendant fired one shot from a handgun toward the vehicle that his nephew was in. The vehicle was occupied by one other person and therefore he was charged with two counts. The next day he was taken into custody and a loaded Beretta nine millimeter handgun was located just a few feet away from him. That handgun had previously been reported stolen. I believe he has court on those files later this week in Milwaukee County, Your Honor. As far as convictions are concerned, there's a 2012 conviction from May, May 15, 2012, resisting obstructing misdemeanor in Milwaukee County, sentenced to 30 day, 37 days jail consecutive to any other sentence. 423 of 2012, there were two files disposed of in Milwaukee County. One of them charged uh, misdemeanor bail jumping and possession of marijuana. He was sentenced to 180 days in the House of Correction on both counts concurrent. There was another file for felony possession of THC as a second or subsequent offense. He was also sentenced to 180 days in the House of Correction for that file. I'm sorry, what was the conviction for? A felony possession of THC as a second or subsequent <coughs> offense. On April 30, 2010, he was convicted in Wood County of strangulation slash suffocation with other charges for battery and criminal damage to property dismissed and read in. There was a withheld sentence for three years probation. 
Ultimately, it was revoked in 2011, and he was sentenced to serve 11 months jail. 2009 conviction from Manitowoc County for misdemeanor obstructing, sentenced to two days jail, time served. 2005 conviction from Langlade County, actually it was a, a county ticket for disorderly conduct. He never paid the fine on that, so he ultimately served 30 days jail. 2003 conviction in Milwaukee County for resisting obstructing, 20 days in the House of Correction. 2002 conviction, Milwaukee County felony possession of THC, second or subsequent offense, 50 days in the House of Correction. 2000 convicted of substantial battery, party to a crime, sentenced to prison, withheld, and three years probation imposed along with six months of condition time. That probation was ultimately revoked and he was sentenced to prison. That's his record from the state of Wisconsin. He has a record from the state of Nevada. June of 2016, he was charged with a sex offender registry violation failed to appear in court on that offense, and there is currently an outstanding warrant for his arrest active in the state of Nevada. 2007, he pled guilty to statutory sexual seduction as a felony. A suspended sentence was ordered for 36 months probation. That's what led to the uh, sex offender requirement, uh, registry requirement which he is currently non-compliant with. In December of 2006, there were two files disposed of in Nevada. Uh, one was uh, domestic battery as a misdemeanor. He received a suspended sentence. And the other, he was found guilty at trial of obstructing misdemeanor and sentenced to jail. In the state of Georgia, he has a conviction from May of 2021, I'm sorry, not a, not a conviction, an arrest from May of 2021 for misdemeanor battery, domestic violence. The disposition of that case is unknown. And uh, of course, there's a paternity action that was pending here in Waukesha County that uh, had been uh, a warrant or capius had been issued for him on at least eight occasions during the life of that file. That's a 2003 case. He was sentenced to jail on several occasions for failing to pay child support. He uh, was once allowed Huber privileges on a jail sentence, but had the, those Huber privileges revoked in 2009. Most recently, there was a warrant issued in August of 2021 and uh, Judge Maxwell signed an order to lift a stay of a 120-day jail sentence. That is the extent of his criminal history that we are aware of, Your Honor. Um, I think it's very plain on its face. He's a lifelong criminal. He is someone who has repeatedly, continuously, uh, disobeyed law enforcement based on the resisting, obstructing uh, type charges. There's multiple counts of bail jumping, disregarding court orders, disrespecting court orders. There's multiple acts of violence. There's weapons violations. This man has a history and a pattern of engaging in violent, dangerous behavior in the community. And it was no different on November 21 of 2021. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the attack. And I choose to call it an attack instead of referring to it as the parade, as somebody mentioned. There's nothing wrong with the parade. The parade is good. The parade is the embodiment of a community. That's what you expect to see at a parade is children at a parade, families, people from all over the area coming together for a joyful, happy event. The parade will continue. It will kick off again in a few short weeks. And I hope and pray 
There's joy and laughter and kids in the street collecting candy. That's what it should be. So I'm not going to refer to this case as the parade. I'm going to refer to it as what it was, an attack. And the facts are very clear, Your Honor. Very few of the victims who were struck had any idea this car was barreling down on them. It's an act of a coward, plain and simple. They had no way to know it was coming. And he mowed over them and ran them over without any ability to defend themselves. What is so offensive about this conduct, Your Honor, is obviously the violent nature of it. But even more so, the defendant's conduct and behavior in this court, his complete lack of uh, regard for the decorum of the court, the respect of the court. And, and I don't mean you personally, of course you deserve that as well, but I mean for the sanctity of the court, the courtroom, the process that we as Americans respect and treasure and protect for well over 200 years and he can't engage in the most civil behavior as being quiet when another person speaks. 